Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's live stream. We are here with Jake, and we are going to talk about version 4.6. First thing first, can you hear us well? Meanwhile, don't forget to click on the notification bell and subscribe to the channel so you're not going to lose a live stream anymore. Now, uh, I think everybody can hear us. So, Jake, how are you? Hey, hey, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Oh, well, I would say good at <laughs> home. You know, usual things. So, what are we talking about today? A new version is coming up starting 15th of March. So how we deal with that, this live stream is we go through the feature set, even though we know all of you already know everything because you have read the full text on the forum, right? Hmm, not really sure, but let's see. So what's coming? Regions and tribes. Jake, tell us a bit about this. Exactly. So what we are gonna have will be a server merge where all the domains are now grouped as regions. We have five regions, which is America, Asia, Arabic, and Europe, which will play with three tribes. And we will have the international region, which is gonna go with five tribes. And the interface will be available in all languages all the time. So you can uh, play where you want in the language uh, you understand and what you prefer and have the uh, Trivian experience with way more players because the many domains uh, merge together into those regions. At the same time, uh, we have a more regular starting setup for the servers so that there are more chances to join a new server uh, for all the players. Awesome. So talking about the size of the map, um, uh, I can go for it with this. So. Most of the domains right now are already on the small map, which is 401 per 401. And please don't be confused. That means that we go from minus 200 to plus 200. Uh, some people are still confused about this uh, uh, naming of the map, but basically it's just the length of the side. And we will increase availability of uh, 15 and nine croppers. Now I want to know more about this. Yes, so uh, we've heard that with the smaller map size uh, from 801 but down to 401, uh, there are two less 15C and 9C out on the map. And we are tackling that by increasing the number of those uh, croppers um, by slightly reducing the um, other versions of the, like, like the um, 6C or the uh, 7C or the uh, regular um, other versions of, of uh, Wellex um, to have more space for 15C and 9C, which um, should then be more, more um, potential targets for you to settle and conquer and fight about. All right. Hmm. Let's see if I can get a 15 cropper next time. <laughs> I wish you the best of that. Thank you. All right, and uh, what about server speed? I know we normally have a regular 1x and 3x, uh, but we were going to add things, right? Exactly. So we have, um, besides the map size, we have a regular rotation for uh, even a 10 times speed server, um, the 5 times speed server as well. We all know the uh, 3x servers already, and uh, we still have a regular rotation also for the 1x servers. So we have the, like last year we've learned that the 10x speed server is so much fun for players who want the whole Travian uh, mayhem into one month. Uh, and with that, we listen. And now you can regularly start on those servers racing for the victory. OK, yeah, that is insane. I mean, I, I can't even imagine. I remember one of the ambassadors suggesting me live streaming uh, playing a 10x <laughs> server, but I think I would have started crying after 30 minutes. So I'm not sure if it's, it will ever happen. Uh, I know the community is asking for 2x servers and news. I actually did talk with uh, Brian, the product owner, and we we never said we won't have 2x servers. We will have 2x servers, but it's just not going to be 
every X amount of weeks, like the other game worlds will be, the other speed will be. So the 2X server will be a thing, you will get them, just not with a fixed schedule. Now, how to know when one will start? You check on the Trello calendar and uh, you will know. We normally post the upcoming uh, server start for the month uh, after, around the mid uh, or the 20th of the month. So I'm pretty sure in a few days I will already start updating the calendar with a few, with a few additional dates. So stay tuned. Next topic. New task system. That's one of my favorites. Yes, I know. So in the past, we already introduced the contextual help for guidance for new players. And we wanted to extend the um, the, the what to do um, list for, for everybody. So we introduced a new uh, task system as well. And with that, you have way more tasks throughout the entire duration because whenever you settle a new village or even conquer a new village, uh, you have tasks to do um, to grow your village, to uh, regain the loyalty, to um, like grow everything further and further and further. Those um, tasks give uh, resources and hero XP as a reward. And with that, players should be able to uh, grow even faster and grow uh, bigger and have more fun with Travian Legends in, in total for old and new players. Now, one question that we got mm -hmm. is uh, why we are not uh, uh, providing the list of rewards for each tasks. Um, we have provided the list uh, of uh, the task and uh, where you can find either in the start village or in the settled village or conquered mm -hmm. village. But mm -hmm. we didn't provide the uh, exact amount of uh, resources that a player can get out of it. Yes. And uh, this is uh, for, uh, as a reason behind that is that um, the whole reward scale with your hero level. So um, depending on your hero level, you will get different rewards. Um, and having a table for like on level one, you would get this amount of resources. On level 10, you would get those amount of resources. Uh, it's just like so much Excel. That's something we just don't want to share. And um, what you can see is... Uh, go into the game, um, log into your account, check your tasks once you are on a server where this is enabled uh, as a seven-day server, for example, or 4.6 servers then in the future. And um, there you can see which rewards you currently get and how they progress over time uh, just by playing the game. All right. I hope that this answer will satisfy our players. But I'm pretty sure that our players are so good that they can make all the math that they want so the, after the first server we will have full setting of okay you have to take this task first and that task after i know that all right next topic another one i love this one. Oh my god i love this one so much because i love to kill animals i'm sorry for all <laughs> the animal protectors here but yeah so it's oasis what is going to change with oasis exactly so oasis are a super important part of the early game oasis are in the past created with uh, resources and whoever gets those resources first has a huge advantage at the very, very beginning of the service. This created a situation where players banded together to kill an oasis where people invited their family and friends and, and whoever they know and maybe even some grayish other things. You know what I'm talking about? And we want to um, make the game playable with, without those kinds of channeling again. So we want to make it harder for people to um, betray those, those rules we, we made up for the game. And with those changes, we will uh, create the oasis without any resources, but there are nature troops in those oasis. And if you kill those, they reward you a bounty, which basically represents the resources which um, the oasis would have been spawned with. Once they kill uh, the nature troops are killed, the regular regular resource production for races kicks in and um, the resources can be micro farmed and everything is as the, as, as the past. So you might wonder why um, this is. So the uh, resources, if they are given as a, as a reward, 
they, they go into the hero inventory. So they are bound to that account. While in the past, just killing or caging um, the um, troops with your hero would leave the resources uh, without any guard um, in the Oasis unbound to any account. So uh, this way, our pushing protection cannot treat it as an uh, actual push to do that. Now, with the resources being bound to an uh, account, um, they, it's much harder to export it to push um, uh, somebody else. And with that, we will have a way more fair um, early game and a better race for the second village in, in the early. And again, the animal killing gives rewards all the time. So if you want to smash some animals uh, four weeks into the server, go ahead, do that. You will get more resources based on that. And for um, the farming part, for the people who want to have a farm list with Oasis, you can still do that once you cleared the animals from the Oasis the first time, a regular production starts. So basically Oasis are giving more resources than ever before um, for, for us to claim. All right, about this topic, we have a million questions. So the first one is uh, from, uh, I am sorry, I'm how I going to pronounce this name, Touch Kong Wok. I hope it's correct, but I doubt that it's asking uh, how many resources for killing animal in Oasis. Yes, so um, we made that, um, that the resources are dependent on how much supply the uh, nature troop uh, has. So uh, we will give out 50 wood, clay, iron and crop each for one supply unit. And a red, for example, has one supply, gives you 50 clay, 50 wood, 50 iron, 50 crop each. And if you want to go animal hunt, uh, elephant hunting, then this one gives you 250 wood, 250 clay, 250 iron, and 250 crop. So that's the amount of resources you get for killing resource uh, for killing animals in Oasis. Perfect. Then the next questions, I think it comes from the the forum. Or no, also from Dayard as well. I think he's asking mm -hmm. the same thing. So let's say the server starts. I clear an oasis, I get all mm -hmm. the rewards of those animals. Then mm -hmm. uh, during beginner protection, no animal spawns anymore. Mm -hmm. As soon as the first, uh, the first, uh, the basic beginner protection ends, so after five days of the mm -hmm. server on one X, the animals start spawning again. Mm -hmm. Are those uh, animal also producing rewards like hero inventory rewards when killed? Yes, exactly. Those also uh, give our rewards for being killed. Those um, are still available for hunting. Uh, it's not like like important. It's not the case that it's only for the first animals, but it's for every animal. All right. Now we have uh, uh, Sultan Obeidat. I'm sorry, people. You have such complicated names. That is asking how much do Oasis produce per hour? If I remember right, there is a, a page on Travian Answers because it depends on the type of Oasis. It's something between uh, four, you know, 30 and 70 per hour, depending on let, the... Let me jump type. in here. I, I just yes. opened the answers. <laughs> yes, I, I, I just... was. You know, I saw that you were looking for it, <laughs> and I was just trying to talk to, as to... much as possible exactly. to give you the time to get exact Perfect. data. See? Exactly. We are a team so, here. Precisely. So uh, it really depends on what kind of um, oasis we are talking about. So, the, for example, the 25% wood oasis gives 40 wood per hour and 10 clay, 10 iron, 10 crop per hour, while a 50% um, wood production bonus oasis would produce 80 wood and 10 clay, 10 iron, 10 crop. Um, and the, the regular oasis can um, save up to 1,000 resources per resource uh, type, and the 50% oasis can uh, save up to 2,000 uh, resources per resource type. And um, for example, the plus 25% iron and plus 25% crop, uh, which gives those bonuses on, on two resources, they produce 10 wood, 10 clay, 40 iron, and 40 crop uh, until they have their max storage of 2,000 reached. 
I hope that answers your question. I think it does. Now, uh, Carnival Touch, which, yeah, I don't like your name, by the way, because I think I know you, uh, is asking, uh, okay, is saying, actually, uh, let's invite all the family, uh, clear oasis in two hours, and then micro farming oasis, and it will be the same as before. But this is not true, because, be because before, the oasis was started producing resources at server start. Now, the oasis will only start producing resources after all the animals are cleared. Therefore, you won't get uh, any more those, hey, let's uh, use a friend's family, hamster, pets, and so on to clear the oasis, and then I get a full load of uh, resources, because those resources are not there, simply. They will start producing after. There's, therefore, everybody can go on those oases and get the little amount, which is totally fine. You just won't have that one person getting all the farm of that oasis by himself. Correct? Yeah, and not Jake? only the farm, but like, like the few thousand resources which are laying around. And um, the family and friends approach uh, always goes with let's clear the oasis and don't take the resources so that the one guy who is the puppet master behind all things can take all the resources. There are no resources to take because the resources are given out when the animals die to the account who kills the animal. So instead of having an account which just takes the resources from the oasis and everything is good, these players still need to somehow export that. And uh, Martina, you remember last year we in, in, uh, increased the amount of population you need to have until you can use the marketplace. Yes, I um, do. So we are tackling those uh, topics. We are taking it seriously. And um, this way we will make the life for players who want to abuse the family and friends uh, part. Uh, we make, will make it harder for them uh, to abuse it. And on the other side, we are a massive multiplayer online game. If you want to play with your friends and you want to coordinate and improve your um, winning chances by doing certain actions in a certain order, which basically is called strategy, um, then you're in the right place for Travian. And the, the um, distance between, uh, or, or the distinguishability between um, those players who claim to be plenty players, but actually are just one. And uh, on the other side, real friends who want to play together is, is, is very, very tough. And uh, we want to try or we strive for uh, having those uh, rules in a way that players who want to play together regularly and uh, by the rules can do that. And people who want to bend the rules have a hard time and bending those rules. Perfect. All right. So I have two questions. One is for me, actually, that it's from a Calvator. I was ignoring the question because he knows already the answer, but I will go for it. <laughs> when are we going to replace elephant with cows? You remember the talk during the last live stream? Yeah, we are back mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. uh, the short answer is never. But I can fight for this. If you, Clavator, manage to convince Jake and Brian to get me unicorns. If mm -hmm. you get me unicorns, I will fight for your cows. Hmm? Deal? Good. The other question is from Mustafa, that it's asking if it will be possible to buy resources, ah, gold for resources in future. Ah, uh, no. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we won't sell resources for gold. Um, the, the, the closest you can get to that is um, the 25% bonus, which you can pay up, uh, buy it's the for... the other way around. They want to buy gold with resources. Ah. Yes. Okay, yes. So... Um, I think um, it's the same answer, though. It's the same answer, though, but the, the argument is the opposite, uh, of course. Um, so we, we don't want to sell resources 
for gold. So we won't sell gold for resources. They, they are basically independent of each other, gold and resources. And um, the closest connection they get is the 25% bonus, uh, which can be uh, bought for um, the, the gold together with plus. And um, that's it. Uh, there will no be there will not be a way to buy resources or to sell resources for gold. Perfect. Now I guess the Oasis topic so far is exhausted, so let's go for the next one. Also my favorite one. <laughs> yes, yes, rearranging this, buildings. This one took took quite some while. So um you you know, Travian Legends is a very old game. So we have parts of the game which are very, very old. And this is why it took so long for us to make it possible to rearrange buildings. But because of the hard work of our development team over the, really the past years, introducing and refactoring um, the, the game step by step by step, now we are able to finally do something like this and offer you the way to uh, rearrange buildings. So um, you can... Uh, go into that rearrange building feature and rearrange your village as you wish. You can move the buildings around as you want. Uh, there are exceptions, of course. You cannot move around the world wonder. You cannot move around the, the rally points. So there are some limitations. But besides those limitations, you can switch around how you want. And once you press the rearrange uh, buildings button, um, it deducts 20 gold per feature use and save the new position. So whenever you conquer a village which has the, a horrible layout, you can fix that without destroying all the buildings and rebuilding them. This is pure cosmetical. So moving buildings out of the way while there is a catapult attack doesn't change anything for the catapult attack. Um, it happened that you might move your treasury out of the way so it isn't hit, but that's not how it works. All right. <laughs> so also this topic generated a lot of um, question and that one is uh, uh, why it does cost gold? Well, we are still a company and uh, this is one of those features that are not making a, an account more powerful. So it's the perfect feature to monetize because you don't really need it uh, because it does not really change that much on your account power. It's just pure cosmetic or like me, if a building is not in the right position, I tend to like, okay, I'm going to kill this building because my dual put in the wrong position, <laughs> so he will pay those resources. Uh, but really, it doesn't change anything. So it's definitely the perfect feature to monetize because a player that does not pay gold won't be affected by it anyway. Yes. And also, it's uh, such, a, such a, a special thing uh, that it won't happen all the time. So, for example, uh, if it would have been for free, I'm 100% sure my sitter would troll me every night by rearranging the buildings for his liking. I would need to rearrange them back. And that's something I'd like not to have. And some um, resource costs, or in this case, gold costs, uh, makes that... Um, a really very bad troll and it won't happen. So yes. that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I know people that may do that anyway, even if it's for gold, but this is another topic. Uh, and I have a sad answer for AJ. Can you rearrange the main building? The main building has a, a very specific slot where it needs to be. So this one cannot be arranged. And the same goes for the Wonder of the World. Also, the Wonder of the World cannot be rearranged in another position, just for you exactly. guys to know. Uh, yes, I can't see any other questions here, but I remember one question uh, very important that was asked, I think, uh, from a volunteer or on the forum, I can't really remember right now, that is, Imagine I get an operation against me. They are coming to get my artifacts. So basically they are coming only for the treasury. 
So what I do, I move the treasury to another slot right before they land. Will the attack still hit my treasury? So, I mean, you know, you, you guys know the game. Fighting is awesomely fast in Travian Legends. So the troops are there and fighting is done. So, of course, the catapults check where is your treasury right now. And of course, they target the treasury where it is right now. They don't care if it was somewhere else 10 seconds before, or the, and they don't care if the uh, builders are already working to move it over uh, somewhere else. Uh, they just shoot where it currently is. So rearranging does not protect you in any way from um, catapult damage. It doesn't have any effect on fighting. So it is a pure cosmetical feature in this, this regard. Awesome. I guess this was the last question for this feature. So let's move to the vacation mode. I know this was a topic we have been through with the ambassadors forever. We really discussed it thoroughly. And that this is basically the result of that discussion. So exactly. Yeah. The, the, the most important part for the vacation mode is that it is an real life external of the game feature. It's a feature which should allow players to go for vacation for a weekend off. I don't need to think about my account. I need some, some time off. And it should not be a mechanic to be used in game to deny opponents oasis, to um, do some other shenanigans like, like saving hammers and so on. Uh, that's not what it's made for. It's made for players who want to take a break for a day or two or three and then come back without having their account being in, in, in shambles. So what we change with the vacation mode is we add cooldowns for the start vacation and the abort vacation. So um, and what, what, what happened in the past was the players are in vacation. They drop out of vacation for like five minutes to manage their account and then hop back into a uh, vacation to be able to stay protected. And with this cooldown, once a vacation started, it cannot be aborted until um, uh, the cooldown uh, is, is, is uh, through. And once you abort it or the re vacation runs regularly, you cannot start a vacation for a certain period of time. And uh, this will reduce this, oh, he was online for five minutes, did something, and then went back to vacation. We missed our, our window of opportunity to send fakes against him to block him from entering vacation mode. This will open up as it's this time frame uh, for players to react on, on the vacation. The second part is we reduce the total amount of uh, vacation days. This was a, a widely spread request um, so that we have less issues with the whole mechanic if there are uh, less days. Uh, in the past, it was possible to spend your resources to the alliance bonuses uh, during vacation. And this is something uh, we blocked as well now. And we also introduced an 84 hour block for entering a vacation after you claim an oasis, I know you annex an oasis. So what happened in the past is that somebody settles near a juicy 150 cropper and just snacks one oasis and goes for vacation and afterwards even sets his account into deletion because that account has done what it should do, should block away an oasis. And now it is like that if you conquer that oasis, you cannot go into vacation mode for 84 hours. This is a time where players can react to and reconquer the oasis, where they can start attacks on that account so that it's for longer time prevented for to go into vacation and react on that abuse of the of the vacation mode or attempted abuse of the vacation mode. And those four changes should make the vacation mode uh, way more pleasurable. It should be no more that players say, oh, there's vacation mode, yeah. It's more like an, oh, okay, he's gone on vacation, he's, he's gone away. 
uh, and it's fine because he doesn't have any oasis. He has no opportunity to just jump in for a few minutes to rearrange his crop, uh, to train more troops and so on. Um, because he really is in vacation. Perfect. So there are questions about this topic, but before I have seen a few questions on topic we already talked. Don't worry, we will go back to them at the end. Right now we are go just going through uh, the different topics and once we're finished, we will answer additional question on any topic we did talk. To talk about the vacation mode, uh, there is a uh, Mathieu Perrin that says uh, the main problem was to set vacation mode in order to dodge an offensive operation. Well, first, you need to know that the offensive operation is coming to you. And I am getting currently spammed by raids with one troop that are lasting 64 hours just for me not to go to vacation. So you already found a way to dodge this problem of people going to vacation when you hit them with an operation. And Mathieu also asked a question. The cooldown and the 48 hours blocks, does depend on the server speed or not? Um, let, let me check my, my sheet sheet for that one. Meanwhile, I can answer another question from Mustafa that says, can you start vacation many times? Yes and no. You can start a vacation, then you have the cooldowns. That cat, cat, there's a cat. <laughs> Sorry, people. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the home office uh, topic. <laughs> okay, but it's fun. Uh, what I was saying, yes. You have a limited amount of days of vacation mode. And if you enter an exit, that counts as far as I know as one day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can enter an exit vacation 15 times. That's it. Then you are over with the days. And to go out of vacation before the time, you need to spend gold. Have you found that what you were looking for? I can go with so, another So, yes. One. Okay. It's, 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 um, it's two separate things. So, um, the 12-hour cooldown... Um, for starting and aborting is independent of um, the speed. And the um, 84 hours for the Oasis is also independent of speed. Um, so I already read um, 84 hours on 5x server is pretty long. And yes, it is. Um, but it still says that the vacation mode is a real life feature. And with that, we always go with the real life time instead of the speed of the servers. Good. Then I haven't seen uh, any other questions. So uh, regarding this topic, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, then let's go to the hospital. So the hospital comes from uh, Codex, no, before. Puff to Pandora? From, from an annual special. From one Puff of to the... Pandora, uh, I feature, think it yes. was Puff to Pandora. Yes. Uh, no. Well, one of the annual special. We have tested it in uh, also New Year special. That is a wonder of the world server. And now it's coming everywhere. So talk us, tell us about the hospital. Yes. So uh, one, one main um, problem players who want to attack um, have is once they have their big hammer and throw it against an anvil, they have a hard time retraining all those troops because as an attacking player, you can only train your troops in one village as you cannot merge them from another uh, villages. And recovering from such an uh, operation is super hard. For defensive players, it's way easier because they can train their troops in many villages and gen then just join forces as a reinforcement. So the hospital, once you've built it, will uh, generate wounded troops whenever you fight. And you can use those wounded troops to uh, have an additional training queue to train those troops faster than in the, um, in the uh, barracks and additionally to the barracks. 
So you will be able to recover faster from your losses. You will be able to fight more, to make more impact on the game world, and have a great time in Travian Legends. I moved too fast, sorry. Uh, so um, I didn't see any questions about the hospital uh, in the live stream. I, I think I read one uh, in Discord, if I remember correctly, that was, we will need an additional slot for the hospital. I think there is also like um, a survey or a poll or it was one suggestion. So yes, definitely the strategy will change. Right, Jake, tell me something exactly. about this. Exactly. Um, you you still have the same amount of building slots available than you had uh, in the past, but we are giving you more um, buildings to um, build. So, of course, you need to make a decision which buildings you want to have. Do you favor uh, a smithy to be able to upgrade your troops furthermore, or um, do you focus on upgrading them as fast as possible so that you can destroy the smithy? Um, like... Decisions like that will be there all the time, and we will introduce you to new decisions because we are a vivid game. Uh, the Travian Legends is, is pretty much alive, and um, the whole strategy guides that were, which are already out there, how to build the perfect village, they might need an update with this. Yeah, I guess. All right, so no more questions about the hospital. Well, actually, no, there is one from, uh, well, I, I can read Italian so I can understand. And uh, it raised uh, one of the topics that are the hottest topic for this past year in Travian Legends, touch accounts. So just to close the topic, people, we are going to change the rules. It's coming in March. With the rules, the development team is also um, developing some tool to support our rule enforcement team to get read or at least to punish people that abuse the rules. We will do the same steps we have done with the bot detection that are actually in place and are working fine. We are fighting these behaviors. It's not that we don't care. We do care. That is why we are investing so much money, resources, and time to develop this tool, to change the rule, and to make sure that the game is fair as much as possible. Now, next topic. And we can go back to that if you have questions. Next topic is gold. There is a lot of changes also for what is concerning gold from uh, the pricing that in uh, many countries will be less expensive. Uh, the starter packages, the new shop that is already live everywhere but will have new features. The fact that you can move uh, gold from one server to another with different regions, which is not possible right now. And we are also giving out more gold at start. And we are also uh, raising the cost of the gold club, but that goes with the starting gold uh, price raise. Therefore, it's actually less expensive with the new task system. So um, I can go through it. You can go through it, Jake. Well, how do you prefer it? Yeah. So uh, for the starter package, uh, we are starting to offer um, players an, an extra deal uh, once they are uh, deep enough into the game. And um, that's like an, uh, an, an offer uh, for some time. Um, so this is something uh, which we already uh, are rolling out um, and which will be there for all new game worlds for 4.6. Like with rolling out, I mean, we are already testing it on, on a server. Um, we also add notifications on promotions so that uh, you don't miss when there is a promotion um, with the standardized gold price. We get rid of um, what separates different domains in the past and which allows us to be able to move um, the gold transfer links to be, be redeemable in, in all the regions. And with that, we make it um, even easier to switch around and hey, let's check out how the Asian servers are uh, 
being played. Or let's check out how the American time zone uh, just plays the servers. Uh, with the goal transfer links redeemable in every region, um, you have that freedom. And we can can uh, create this freedom for you. With the, with the starting gold race to 130 gold, uh, we give new players um, a huge advantage over the past where they needed to uh, flip every other gold coin uh, in order to to think, is it worth it? With 130 gold, you can achieve like like really a lot. And it um, is a, basically the, the decision for them if they want to save up for a gold club, then they need to save up almost as much resources and gold um, as in the past. I always say resource and gold, but I mean the resource gold um, as in the past. And they, they shouldn't have a harder time to, to reach that uh, raised uh, gold club price. And on the other side, the um, paying players uh, still have to the, the same uh, amount of uh, gold they need to spend for, for that. So the gold crop race is basically um, the counterweight to the starting gold race. But it still isn't like an, an one to one connection because not everybody plays the gold club, but everybody gets the starting gold and so on. Um, but you get the idea that we want to uh, make the game uh, the least amount of pay to win as possible. And with stuffing gold for everybody, uh, we are doing a step into that direction ensuring that we have a fair game and that we are basically a free-to-play game and not a pay-to-win game. Yeah. So Heidi, I know you, <laughs> is asking, uh, uh, can we still use our old transfer gold? The answer is yes. Actually, what will happen on uh, the first server that starts? Let's say that we start an America server. And you were playing, uh, I don't know, Anglosphere, Italy, Nordics, and you have like three little gold transfer link. On that America server, you will be able to redeem all those transfer link for any other, from any other domain. Therefore, it will perfectly work for you. On top of that, what we are going to do is also you can uh, transfer within regions. So let's say you start playing America, you play a bit, then you find out all your friends are in uh, the Asia speed the game world. You, just, you cancel the account, you delete the account, and you get a gold transfer link, and that link you can redeem on any regional server. What you cannot do is get that gold transfer link from America and uh, use it back in Italy or in Spain or in Portugal in the old game words. But from the old one to the new one, you can uh, take all your gold transfer link. Uh, then uh, there was a question which I cannot answer right now. Uh, there's a Canadian player that asked if uh, we will enable a payment with Canadian dollars. I cannot answer now because it's uh, neither my topic nor Jake's topic. We are clueless about it. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down or I will ask my assistant that are watching the live stream to write it down. <laughs> and I will poke uh, Fabi. That's the person that is in charge of this topic. And I will get back to you somehow, maybe on Discord, just book me in private. Uh, all right. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Lucas asking, why does the cost of the gold club becomes independent of the server speed? Um, well, the uh, in the past, uh, what he's referring for to is um, that the uh, gold club price uh, was uh, cheaper on uh, speed servers because they are shorter. And um, on the other side, uh, something like plus has a shorter duration on speed servers uh, because they um, like are uh, co compressed in, in uh, space. Um, so this, this raised a couple of questions. Uh, why it is like that and um, how it's getting more and more complicated and then the uh, gold price, uh, gold club price changed over time uh, when the server got altered enough and he wanted to streamline the whole thing and make it straightforward and, and easier to uh, have it like in, in one go. And the other side is um, if you play speed or if you play a regular server, in both cases uh, you're getting an, a huge 
uh, amount of features from the gold crop, including the farm list, including uh, the trade routes, um, which benefit you. And even on a speed server, even though it's shorter, it benefits you uh, pretty much the same um, effect because you can still uh, go with uh, your farming way faster, can use the farm list more often, even though it's for a shorter period of time. So we feel it's fair um, to have one price for uh, all the speeds, even if it's a an, an, uh, uh, speed server. Awesome. So I see there are questions about gold trappers and the goal building. This live stream is not about that. Uh, if we have time, we will go back to that topic at the end of the live stream. So next topic is buildings. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So some time ago, the community that was four years ago, the community, I was, I did just join the company, ask loudly why all the buildings are the same for all the tribes. We need to have the buildings different for all the tribes. This was asked by the community people. You did ask us. I am Martina also on Discord, Nathan. Uh, and after this was requested, the art team started working on the buildings and created a five different set of building. I think it was like 250 images because then we have also buildings that looks different, for example, in Arabic, like the tea house. And it was a huge, huge, huge work because uh, as an artist, you make a pretty great art in a huge size, then you reduce so, so much and then you have to adjust it, obviously, because it needs to be recognizable. We implemented it and uh, there was uh, some of, part of the community was very happy, part of the community was not happy. Uh, in general, we did surveys and we tackled what were the uh, most common issue. That was like two. One was uh, some uh, tribe uh, as a, uh, not enough color shading difference in the building, like golds and teutons, they are a bit too monochromatic. Therefore, the buildings at the first sight look a bit too similar to each other. And the other one was uh, the shape of some building is too similar between each other. Perfect. So the art team started working again, and now we are going to finally release uh, this change that is, uh, we have added uh, some things. One that I really miss, that is the brittel near the bakery. For example, this is just one of the details. And we are going also to change, for example, the color of the roofs of the Teutons, the shape of some building, for example, the storage, uh, no, the storage, uh, Yes, that's the storage. The storage that is too similar to other buildings so that the buildings themselves look different one from each other. This change will not be implemented only on version 4.6, but we will also implement it in the old servers so everybody can get this change. And I think... Uh, <laughs> Bowl Champs is saying, so changing building colors still has higher priority than fighting bots. No, it's not. But I'm, not, I'm pretty sure if I go ask Mel and Kai to develop a, a, a tool for uh, looking for the bots, they will tell me we are artists, we are not developers. On the other side, we have uh, two people in the team, Timo and Anne. They are our bot detection team and they work on daily basis on bot detection, identifying bot, fighting them, killing them, capturing them, make them disappear from the Travian world. This is their job and they are very good at it because if you check, we have a lot, a lot of less bots that are on the game. Now, they are still there? Yes, they are because the more we develop, the more they develop. So it's just a running after each other. We will do, we will, we are doing it though. Yes. 
And if you have any information, uh, for example, you you uh, suspect somebody from using a bot, uh, feel free to write a ticket uh, so that our bot detection team can take a look into it because they also need your cooperation. They also need your information uh, to identify those uh, bots. Um, with the uh, like like in the past, we really achieved a lot in the front against bots and. Uh, I'm really proud of of uh, that bot detection team. Uh, what they achieved is amazing. And I only can encourage you, bots are bad, don't use them. Um, those, those are really silly things to do. Um, if you suspect somebody of using a bot, report them and um, our teams can look into that. Perfect. And you should, you can also, instead of sending a ticket, use the report button within the game. Uh, until the last version, we you could only report one person per day. We have increased, and now you can report two people per day. So use the button if you have doubt someone is not respecting the rules. The rule enforcement team and the bot detection team will have a look into these people. Now... We are actually finished with the topic, so I want to go back to one question that was uh, some time ago, that was about, it was from Fritz. Let me scroll up in the chat a bit. I, it was about, I mean, I had it there in my brain till three seconds ago, and now it's the time and I miss it. Oh, come on. Wow, people, you really write a lot. Yes, one was, does caged animal give resources for, uh, from, so if you cage animal, did you get resources item? The yes, answer you, is. Sorry, you know, we, we <laughs> talked over each other. Um, yes, um, if you cage um, um, animals, you also get the uh, resources. What? What? You told me Am no. Am I telling you one? What? Oh, then, then. <laughs> what are we talking about? Wait a second. Then, I asked sorry, sorry, you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, you're you. right. You're right. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, you... I'm confused. I'm confused. Okay. I'm sorry. Stop. Yes. Uh, if I, yes. Now I got the question. Yes. Um, <laughs> you need to kill the animals to get the bounty. I am sorry for the confusion. Okay. Wait, I'm, I'm sweating like crazy now. <laughs> Uh, yes. I just if wanted to make sure you're awake. If you cage the animal, you get the animal as yes. a reward. If you kill the animal, you get the resources as a reward. Okay, next question. Uh, yes, now I know. Still from Freaks, and this, is, uh, this was actually the question I was looking for, and it's about the uh, rearranged buildings. And this is totally for you. Can we have a platinum club where you get to rearrange the building uh, throughout the entire duration of the server? Um, I'm pretty sure we, we, we can have that. Um, I'm, I'm uh, positive that uh, we could make a platinum club where uh, a lot of features are included together so that um, it's, it's, it's worth because it's even a better version than the gold club. Uh, but right now, there are no, no plans to do that, especially not for 4.6, because that would be really short notice. Um, but in, in, in general, uh, yes, that's something uh, we, we could uh, explore. Perfect. Now, I have a question about the still the, uh, the animals. So we go back to the oasis. Uh, I, think, I think I know the answer, but I still ask. Uh, Will I get the bounty for the animals, even though I kill the animals in the neighbor village instead of uh, the oasis? So um, the the no, no, I'm really, really insecure based on my oopsie uh, a few minutes ago. Um, so. As far as I'm aware right now, um, you only get those uh, resources when you kill the troops, uh, when we kill the animals in Oasis. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm right now looking through all the notes near, uh, next to my desk to, to check if I can uh, make sure it's really like that, because I don't want to spread misinformation. All right. Uh, then 
keep looking. I will answer uh, some other question. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Shukri asks again, how much resources per type of animal? You get 50 resources for crop supply. So 50 resources of each resource type per crop supply. That means a rat will give you 50, 50, 50, 50. A elephant, they are the cool one, will give you 250, 250, 250, 250. If you want to check the crop supply of each animal, just check out on uh, Travian Answers. They are listed there. Then, uh, can we play five tribes in local regions anymore? Die hard. Local, local domains will be gone from 15th of March. Only a region will stay. And we will have five regions, the Fantastic Four, how, they, how I call them, America, Asia, Arabics, Europe, will have three tribes, and International will have five tribes on all the game worlds. The local domains are gone completely. Jake, did you find the information? <laughs> no. Yes, sir. From what I found, it, it, it's it's uh, okay, really let's, bound let's to recap the Okay, let's recap one oasis. second. Let's re re yes. recap one second. The question that is uh, putting us in a bit of a trouble is uh, something that we didn't check before, and it's about animals. So the change itself, the, how we presented it, is uh, early game uh, oasis change. So animals in oasis, when killed, give you an hero item resource bounty. Now, exactly. the question that we got was, what happens if player A capture animals and I go kill them on his village? Will this animal give me the bounty? Those animals will not give you the bounty. You can uh, plunder the resources of that other village, uh, except for the things which are hidden in the, ch in the crannies, but the animals will not give um, further bounty. Good. So you can't, you can't uh, circumvent uh, the feature that we have created to avoid uh, friends, grandma, cousin, uh, pets to help you out in the early game. Yes. Clavator, will the resources from the killed animals be in the hero inventory or will the hero take the rest back like a raid? They will be in the hero inventory and it's even better than that. If the hero dies in the battle, he still will have the resources in his inventory. And even better than that, even if you don't send the hero and you send the troops to the oasis, you will get the bounty. So it will just uh, go to the hero inventory, but you don't need to have the hero alive. You don't need to even send the hero. You just need to kill the animals. Emir, so Oasis has in fact been boosted, still only rest has been moved to animals instead. I would say that yes, so me, I am a person that likes to open Oasis, so I put a lot of effort in uh, leveling up my hero because I really like to help my alliance to get the Oasis. So I normally do more simulation for a hero going to kill animals than for troop going to kill enemies. So yes, I have a different play style. So for me, it's a boost because before what I was getting was the gratitude of my friends. Now, beside helping them, I will also get the resources. So I'm very happy about the change and I consider it a boost of the Oasis for my play style. Yes, and um, it's, it's also um, targeted not to be a nerf for races. It's targeted to be a nerf for multis, techs, and uh, how you want to name them, um, as those resources which are uh, given out when um, the animals are killed are really bound to an account instead of just lying around in an oasis for whoever wants to take it for free. And that's the, the most important part we wanted to achieve there, that we have the whole thing uh, being a fight of feeders and techs. 
Yes, so Clavator comes with, so I can just kill animals the first three days with my touch and then farm all the rest from the killed animals after be beginner protection ends. And this is my answer, no. Well, yes, you can, but I would remember you that we are going to change the game rules and we're going to punish this behavior. So you can yes. do that. What you risk is that you get accounts deleted or punished very hard. So not sure if it's worth, let's say like this. Yes, that's one part. And the other part is um, you wait for, for having the beginner's protection over. This already loses you a few days because in the past you would have had the same amount of resources just on day one. And moving those like, like even if everything else fails, like, like you find a way to sneakingly uh, put the, the, the rules, uh, bend the rules and so on. Um, even then, you lost three days. So if that's not a nerf against like having resources on day one and now having the same resources on day three, if that's not hindering, then I don't know what players do with, with resources on day one, to be honest. And um, yes, Travian Legends is not a single player game. I really need to say that. It's not a single player game. If it would be a single player game, of course we can ban everybody else except one person playing the game. But as soon as it's a massively multiplayer game with thousands of players on a map who battle over the artifacts and the construction plans, who really want to build the world wonder, as soon as we have those epic battlefields which we strive for, as soon as we have that, we have multiplayer interaction and we don't want to ban everybody for sending a bit of resources over there. But we cannot distinguish between um, players who just got lucky, got a little bit of resources and want to send them to the Alliance lead for a bit, little push. Um, in the past, the embassy push was, was uh, such a thing. And um, on the other side, say like, yeah, but, but we need to punish you because you send some resources over there. And what we are gonna, what we want to do or what we are aiming for is to make the life of multi-accounts and techs and cousins and pets and however you want to call them um, harder so that it's less beneficial to, to behave like that so that it's the game gets more fair. We won't be able to provide a 100% fair game because we all have different jobs. We all have different times where we want to sleep. We all have different real lives. And there are differences. And those, of course, because the game runs 24-7, have also an effect. So there, there, there is no perfect fairness. But what we're striving for is to increase the fairness. And the Oasis change, from my point of view, really does that. And even with, with your questions, um, about the, yeah, but I, I get the resources three days later. Yes, that's already more fair than it was before. It's already an improvement. And that's what I really liked uh, about the discussions with the ambassador group, because we spoke about those things. We, we came to the agreement that this one should be the way we should go for, and we are implementing it to improve the game for our players. Uh, and this includes you as well. And please, don't forget that this is you are taking these changes as a, like one change. So we, you look at the oasis, you look at the task system, you need to take these changes as a whole. We are changing completely the early game. Will this be the final change we do? Probably not, but it's the first step most likely in the right direction, it will for sure help the fairness. But if you check also the other changes we have done uh, not, so f not so long ago about, uh, okay, uh, when I can trade, when I can use the marketplace, you add the new task system, you add how the rewards are going to the inventory, you add the early game oasis. These are changes to make the early game, which is one of the most critical part of the game, more fair. Now, with these changes, what we aim to give is the possibility to everybody to fight for good croppers. So will this uh, be meaningful 
in the week two. Probably not all good croppers in week two are gone, right? This is where we are focusing the early game. Now Fritz asked, is this change to the Oasis just for the early game? No, yes and no. Meaning the game, it's the, the change itself is to focus the, the uh, changes of the behavior of the players in the early game and improve fairness in the early game. But the change itself go throughout the whole server. That means if the last day of the server you go with your hero, your troops on a very big oasis with uh, tons of elephants, you will still get hero uh, resources, like hero item resources. Exactly. So uh, while we like the intention of uh, the feature is the early game, um, and some of this feature is only for the early game. For example, once the troops, uh, the animal troops are dead, the resources start producing, they never stop producing. So the effect of that is only for the early game. And uh, still, the Oasis will give more resources um, over the whole server duration, because whenever troops respawn, you have the chance to uh, raid them and get some um, some more resources. And I really imagine it like uh, in the past, you have your your uh, micro farm list for races around, and somewhere an animal spawns, and you say, oh no, now some troops die, and I need to send the cleaner again. And now it's more like, an, oh, some animals spawned. I can get some more resources there. That's great. Yes. OK, people, you are writing so much in the chat that I'm probably missing some question. I will try to keep up. Uh, yes, there was a John Jachen, Jachen, sorry for the pronunciation, that asked, can you explain X5, X10, 32 week rotation? Yes, I can. <laughs> Imagine F, uh, X5 server starts in January, the first week of January in Europe. After 32 weeks, another 10x server will start in Europe. The same goes for the other regions. So um, you start the second week of January in America, 10x or 5x. And after 32 weeks, another one will start. That means a 32 weeks rotation. And that goes also for the others. So for example, on international, the 1x is on a four week rotation. That means that every month, every four weeks, you get a new 1x servers on the international server. International region, sorry, not server. All right, then, uh, oh, this is good. I want that to hot streak 4 to 4 is asking, can you increase uh, TT speed to 190 fields per hour? Oh, that is fast. They can do the map in what, in one hour? The full map? <laughs> It, it, it depends on the uh, map size. Um, with uh, uh, 401, X401, it would be like two hours. But uh, it, it's, it's... No, it is one hour. Because if you start whenever ah. you fast, you go, yes. the, the game decides whether you go to the right or to the left or to the north exactly. or to the south because it's a donut. Yes. Yes, you're right. I, I always... Uh, miss that piece uh, when, when thinking about the long distance. As you're right, it's, it's like around the server uh, with that. Would you and ever imagine in the past that I would have corrected you on something like this? Of course, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always open for being corrected. I learned the game, oh my God, this is so good. Sorry, people, yeah. I'm just feeling excited. And I'm, 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 I just want to throw out that um, if you want to have a Totato Thunder with 190 fields per hour, I'd, I'd recommend like a 10 times speed server or 20 times speed server. No. That, that could work out. <laughs> yes, well, they actually, uh, uh, they are now writing uh, that maybe he wanted to say 19 fields per hour. So make them slightly faster. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what the thing, but I would answer as I'm answering for a long time now, 
we are currently not considering any tweaks on any tribes or any suggestion on uh, balancing on any tribes because we want first to gather more data on the Wonder of the World server that we're going to start in March. After that, we will go again through a lot of things. So there were uh, one thing I actually want to ask and that the poor Emir is writing over and over and I'm sorry, but now I got, I got to you is uh, why did Egyptian get such a small nerf with the new update? So now the thing is we have increased the cost of the settlers, which also means the Egyptian needs to, do, to have a, one storage more than the others, but at the end, actually everybody needs to get that storage because uh, the new strategy is to go for small parties very early, so the perception is that the nerf is not enough for Egyptians. Um, yes, so I mean, you you noticed uh, that I mentioned the early game uh, quite a lot. Uh, that's what we are focused um, with with uh, the four point six update um, to to improve the early game uh, as as much as possible. And uh, we've learned from the uh, seven day server that um, Egyptians have a really good time to um, have the the first settled village, the first second village, and. Um, we adjusted it tinily. Uh, on the other side, we we really want to go for a very stable um, game. So um, you've heard it from from other um, games which provide balancing updates every two weeks, um, mixing up things all the time. Um, there are popular games out there which just change balancing without putting it to the patch notes because players can figure out playing the game and. Um, we want to be stable. We want to um, not kill a strategy which is uh, which is out there just by tweaking some numbers. Um, imagine we would uh, nerf Toytata Sunder while you are building a ghost hammer. Um, that that would be like the worst thing to do. Um, so we want to avoid um, changes to the balancing um, to make sure that uh, when we change something. Are, those are tiny changes because we don't want to break up um, the the whole game at once. Uh, we hear very early often that we should stop touching the game, that we should go back to older version numbers. And um, basically, if we would change everything as soon as it was requested, we would running we would be running in circles and we wouldn't improve the game at all because. Then in one month, the Tortages are the uh, most um, uh, strength of the uh, tribes. And then you change another thing. And then suddenly the Gauls would be the best tribe. And then we change another thing. And then suddenly, and, and so on. So it's really, really, really about having the stability. Uh, playing Travian is a huge commitment. And we want to honor this commitment by not throwing around um, balancing changes uh, um, all the time and to make balancing changes really when we think those are um, necessary and um, improve the game furthermore. And we're doing those in, in rather tiny steps, um, but I prefer that way, uh, way over uh, big steps, throwing around everything and um, invalidating um, something which is out there for already uh, quite some time. Yes, thank you, Jake. Uh, so I have two questions. Both are from uh, Pavel, Pavel, Pavel. I think it's Pavel. One is, uh, uh, can you reveal the exact formula of the rewards of the new quest? We are fine with huge Excel files because we need to calculate what is worth building on the very beginning. Every resource count. Yes, that's completely true. Every resource count. And... I can only say that Travian Legends should not be a big Excel file. You, if you want to, can make such a big Excel file and put your effort in and get an advantage and um, use this knowledge for your advantage so that you are the guy who knows which is the best build order and uh, go for it. Um, still, I would not, pro not provide uh, such an Excel file because the information is in the game, you can figure it out through playing, 
and build your guide um, as you wish, um, which is helpful for you and your alliance. Um, it's basically your chance to improve your starting position by uh, figuring those data out. And you can also test on the seven day server that will start next week. So you want to get the data, get all your alliance to play the seven day event server and you will figure it out all of it. Uh, now, there, are, there is another question from Pavel that is in regards to rules. Uh, can you just update rules for the new servers? No, the answer is no, because we have one rule set and it's valid on every game world, so it will be applied also on the old one. But, wait a second, don't panic. We will give you enough time to correct your behavior. You will have a certain amount of time. We will go massive on announcements, so you will not miss it. And you will just use this time to correct the behavior to fit the rules. Then there was another question that uh, was from Emir and also from Mustafa. <laughs> Would Five Tribe be introduced on regional regular server? Yes, that's what we are saying now. All the international game worlds will have from 15 March on Five Tribes. So you play on international, you get your interface in your favorite language, and you have five tribes there. And the hospital and the new task system and the oasis changes and that and then 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 then. All the things, basically. Uh, yes. Then questions. Mustafa asks why we can't play Egyptian and in Travian Legends. Yes, you can from 15 uh, of uh, March on the International mm -hmm. Game Awards and with all the interface language available. I see no more questions. I'm gonna wait another bit. Meanwhile, let's talk about the seven day server. So a few months ago, Brian and Jake came to me. We want to test the new task system before we have it released on the, what was, New Year special? Mm -hmm. New Year special. So we did this seven day event server and the community, you guys loved it very much because it's super short. It's super helpful for us because we can gather uh, feedback, we can gather data from the server and it helped us to tackle a few things uh, and uh, in the new task system, for example. Now we have another round and you can also win prizes because the first 10 people that settle the second village will get 200 gold. What is special of this server is that the payment shop is disabled. You cannot transfer gold in and you cannot transfer gold out and you get 600 starting gold. So those 600 gold you can use or wherever you want. What we are going to test in the round two of the server that start next week, Tuesday at 1 p.m. UTC plus one is the changes to the task system, the changes to the um, oasis, and the changes to the settlers of the Egyptians. Anything else? Will there be the rearrange building there? No, I think no, right? No. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that not. But maybe we can already get a peek in there. But I cannot promise anything. Okay, it was so far... announced for the 4.6. Yes. And if you want to see if we made it already in there, you need to register on that server, play the game. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, die hard. Extra server speed doesn't need... Ah, yes. This is one I also get a lot of times, mm -hmm. also on Discord. So, on 1x speed, uh, the level 20 granary and storage provides you space for 80,000 units of that resource. Now, obviously, <laughs> the production of resources on a 10x server or 5x server is much higher. So you need a lot more storages. Now, the question is, why can't you make in a way that the storage capacity fits the speed of the server? So what is the reason behind it? 
Yes. So the um, what what we are usually want to go with uh, for the speed service is uh, a faster game. So if you have a three time server, it's just playing faster, and um, it's it's it was not thought to be uh, for so extreme as the ten time server where we run into um, issues like that, uh, which which weren't. Um, discussed before. So uh, there might be changes for that for the future to uh, increase the capacity of the storage buildings uh, for speed servers. But it's a speed server, so it should be faster. So please don't expect us to have like 10 times of um, storage capacity because it's a 10 times server and everything is 10 times faster. It might be that it's just like a fraction of that. Um, so that it still be a very very fast server where you still need to log in a lot of times to to uh, spend your resources just because for the sake of it's a speed server and it's a very very special speed server it's a ten times speed server and uh, with that um, the um, might change in the future but we need to learn more about those when we uh, run them on a regular way. Um, how often that happens, because basically you can also try to to um, take this as a um, way to adjust your villages around it, to have more storage villages, which aren't 15 Cs, but are close to them to be able to store this excess resources. Or you find maybe ways to spend those resources fast enough so that you don't run into those issues. Or maybe you uh, find a new village layout which allows you to store a bit more because you sacrifice one more building slot for a granary uh, additionally. And um, that's basically the, the, the part there. Yes. Well, you know, I would love to have, uh, you know, the great granary, great storage by default as granary and the storage in Atanix. That's maybe one thing that could push me to ride the server <laughs> i will uh, i will probably get farmed after three hours but it's totally fine yes and and with that you would even get uh you, you would be even a more juicy target because you could store more resources that, oh my oh my that's true <gasps> it's like night farming on sides. panics with uh, improved capacity that that could be mm -hmm. insane <laughs> all right uh we are going to the time we plan for this live stream. So we have planned one hour and a 30 and we are perfectly there. Uh, I think I didn't see any new questions. Ah, yes. How long is the game on Tanix uh, expected? So the last uh, that we did, Emir, it was 24 and 25 days, the duration. We estimated not more than 30, I think. Mm. Because yes. just because if it's longer, the Natar will have won. So the Natar starts building the wonder of the world after a, after a certain amount of time. So the maximum time is 30 days or 32, something like this. But normally the player finish it before. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. So people. Thank you very much for being with us today while we go through the version 4.6. Uh, we hope we managed to answer all your questions. Um, don't forget, follow us on YouTube. Click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any video anymore. Follow us on uh, Facebook. We also have a nice page with uh, Julia that is now giving out all those codes on the chat. And uh, uh, don't forget to join us on Discord. So Discord is growing. We are also opening local sections on Discord. So soon we will have uh, also new languages. But meanwhile, we organize events. We answer questions. We have a suggestion channel. So don't forget discord.gg slash Travian Legends. And I hope to see you soon in another live stream. And Jake, thank you very much for answering the questions. Say hello also to your cat. It was nice to see you in the live stream. Thank you very much. So, people, enjoy your afternoon. See you soon. Bye. Enjoy your afternoon. See you soon. And we see us on the battlefield. Yes. Bye.